the last kind of the ion selective electrode that we're going to talk in this class is called liquid membrane ion selective electrode or sometimes people call it polymer ion selective electrode the previous one is solid state this one is polymer or liquid membrane so let's see what's happened here so this is the example electrode yeah of course and then you're gonna have the internal solution and external solution that's fine so now what is it made from the electrode so i think you see about uh three things here the most important thing is that this is uh the polymer or the, some kind of film or some kind of uh, stable membrane in order to put something into it so what are those some things the first thing that you need is some is l you can see this is a, there's a lot of l what does l stand for so l stands for l, l stands for ionophore which selectively binds with your analyzed ion for example if you want to measure the cation c c plus here your cation c then you need the ionophore L that can selectively bind with the C plus. Uh, the reason that we use L because it is it is basically a lichen, right? If you remember from the complexation kind of thing, this is lichen. L is lichen and C is the metal ion, and it can bind well if they are they have the appropriate charge and size, something like that. So this is the properties of the ionophore. You can think about you can think of the ionophore as the glass membrane structure for pH measurement or the vacancy site in the solid state. So this can work similarly. So you have some ligand which can selecti selectively bind with your analyte ion. So this is L. So now, so you can see here that you have some LC plus, LC plus, which is the, the binding between your ligand or ionophore and your C plus, which is your analyte ion. Another thing that you need in the selective membrane here is R. R here is stands for hydrophobic ion exchanger. Hydrophobic ion exchanger. First, why is that, why is it hydrophobic? Because you need to put it in the polymer and the if it's hydro, hydrophilic then it may be soluble it may be dissolved from the, the membrane right so you don't have the stability so the the r has to be hydrophobic but what is the actual role of r so you can see here that uh the c plus which is the analyte ion has the charge right and if you put and if you have a lot of c C plus here, you're gonna have a lot of uh, positive charge in the structure and you're gonna generate the imbalance in the charge. And of course, if the charge is imbalanced, then the binding uh, event or the binding between the C plus and L is not gonna happen. So you need something to balance the charge. And here, the R is the ion exchanger to balance the charge. You can think about this as the soft bridge in the galvanic cell. This is a little bit similar, not too much similar, but a little bit similar. The soft bridge in the galvanic cell, you need it to balance the charge. So here, the ion exchanger, uh, you need it to balance the charge as well, the charge from the binding with an light ion. And then your polymer can be maybe PVC, maybe some rubber, maybe some silicone, depending on your design. So again, basically the selectivity of the liquid membrane electrode comes from the binding between the C plus, which is the analyte, with the ligand L, which is which we call ionophore. But the binding may change the charge and make the charge imbalanced. So you need the ion exchanger R to balance the charge. Any question? Is it uh, good? Um, can you please explain why uh, R again has to be hydrophobic? 
So we usually uh, use this type of electrode in the aqueous solution. And if it's hydrophilic, then it can come out from the membrane, right? It can come out from the membrane and you're gonna lose it. So it needs to be hydrophobic in order to keep it in that membrane. You can see that most of the membrane, the polymer here is kind of organic and hydrophobic. Oh, so, so you need this, to keep it in the membrane. This electrode also, we keep it in the aqueous storage? Uh, depends. Depends. So, but, but mostly yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Thank yep. you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this, uh, kind of membrane electrode is special because you can synthesize, uh, several forms of L. So you can detect almost every like every single ion in the chemical world so this is for this is the example this is the example of the ionophore that can selectively bind with your ion for example uh for potassium you may have uh this is something called 30 crowd 10 derivative uh, is fine but i think at, as a chemist at least you should know that potassium ion can selectively bind with valinomycin this is the structure of valinomycin. I think I put it in the handout too. This is the valinomycin, and it turns out that it can selectively bind with potassium ion. This is a computational modeling. I put it here. Most, mostly it's because of, because of the size and because of the charge that gives it the selectivity. And you have other appropriate L or ionophore for other kinds of ion as well. Maybe this is uh, calcium is from antibiotic and this one is PG derivative, something like you don't need to remember. But I, I think I urge you to remember valinomycin. This is kind of important. Valinomycin with the potassium ion. And you can do this with negative ion or anion as well. The example I gave last slide is the positive ion, right? The C plus, but you can do with C minus as well, the, the negative charge, like chloride, bromine, iodide, you have a lot of things here, or thiocyanate. So basically, basically you can uh, synthesize the L for almost every single ion. And this is, this is still the active uh, research field in electrochemistry when people want to fabricate the best uh, polymer ion selective electrode for, uh, to detect the ion. For example, this one. This one is actually from 2013. Uh, if, I don't know if you are familiar with some of the name here. So this is from our department. Uh, uh, so they synthesized the ligand to buy with silver ion to detect the silver ion in the solution and like they synthesized a lot of structure and found like maybe the maybe i don't remember maybe l1 is, uh, is the best one something like that but this is just just to give you an example of how the research was going on or have been going on in terms of the potentiometry so let's uh, do some example just to Review you the the concept of the membrane potential. So for the calcium selective electrode, they usually use the ligand called didesyl phosphate. So this is the structure of the didesyl phosphate. Uh, this question asks you to sketch the E cell versus T calcium graph and indicate the slope. This is a little bit. Uh, I think if you have time to go back and review, you're gonna know, you're gonna find that, that it is very easy. Uh -huh. But let me pull up some kind of thing. So basically, uh, it's this one, right? I think, yeah, I, I put this in the pink, uh, so it is very important. So you're gonna use this uh, relationship that the membrane potential against the PI. So EM is equal to constant minus 0 0.0592 over Z and PI. So let me copy that. So this 
So this is E n is equal to constant minus pi of five nine two uh, over z i p i i is the i. But actually, uh, this is calcium, right? And calcium has the charge of two, right? Plus two. So you can substitute this constant minus 0.0592 over two p calcium. But this is just the membrane potential. You actually want to sketch the E cell versus p calcium. So uh, uh, we may know that E cell is equal to E indicator uh, minus E reference, right? But, and we just, we can ignore the junction potential at this point. So this is the, this is the term. And we know that the E reference is the constant, is one constant. And E indicator is basically E membrane. So you can substitute this term. So this is constant. Minus 0.0592 over 2 p calcium, and minus with another constant. So you basically, so you basically get the new constant, new constant. But I'm just gonna put constant minus 0.0592 over 2 p calcium. So this is the final uh, equation, and you can plot between E cell and p calcium. The slope is something that is multiplied to the p calcium, right? Which is my which is minus pi of five nine two over two. So this is going to be negative slope, and the slope is uh pi of five nine two over two volts per decade. So that's it. You can do it as the millivolt, and you put the things. So it's going to be twenty nine point six, I believe millivolt per decade. 